So in chapter 6, we're talking about merchandising transactions or merchandising business. So up to chapter 6, all we talked about was the service industry. And last week, we looked at the differences between the service industry and the merchandise industry. So if you own a store and it's a merchandising store, which means you get your goods from other people or you buy them from somewhere else, then you sell them in your store. Every time that you make a sale, you're going to have a cost that was associated with that sale. And we call that cost of merchandise sold. Sales is a revenue account. Cost of merchandise sold is an expense account. So every time that we record a sale, we also have to record the associated cost of the merchandise that we sold. Also, we introduced a new account, which was merchandise inventory. And merchandise inventory is an asset. And every time that we make a sale, we are selling an asset. So we have merchandise inventory throughout our store. Every time we make a sale, we have to take that merchandise that we sold off of our books. So in the service industry, whenever we made a, whenever we performed a service, we would either debit cash or accounts receivable and credit fees earned. And then our transaction was through. Now, when we have a merchandising business, we said there's two journal entries that have to be made every time that we make a sale. So we still debit either cash or accounts receivable. And because we're selling goods, we're going to credit sales. So that records our revenue. But then we have to record the cost of merchandise sold. So we make two journal entries. In the second journal entry, we debit cost of merchandise sold because it's an expense. And to increase an expense, you make a debit entry. And then the credit is getting rid of that merchandise inventory that we no longer have in our store. Okay, so that's what we talked about last week. Then we also talked about um, if, you are, if you allow credit sales, what is a way that you can encourage your customers to pay early? You guys remember what that was? What did we offer them? Discount? Yeah. So we said, you know, normally your bill is due in 30 days. But if you'll pay it early, we'll give you a discount. And the credit terms is what that's, less, what that's called look like this. And that says if you pay within 10 days, we'll give you a 2% discount. You don't have to pay within 10 days, but if you do, we'll give you that discount. If you choose not to pay within the first 10 days, then the net or the whole amount of your bill is due within 30 days. All right, so that's from vendors that we buy from as well as customers that are buying from us all right so we introduce that today we're going to talk about freight so freight is shipping charges for shipping every time that a purchase is made um, unless you're physically in the store picking it up freight is involved like if you buy something from amazon they have to ship it to you you buy something from anywhere online unless you do a store pickup, uh, freight is involved, shipping is involved. So the terms of that sale are going to indicate when ownership transfers. So if I buy, let's say that we own a business here and we're buying a machine from California. If you guys have your phones, if you'll put them up. Um, if we buy a machine from California, when do we determine that we assume ownership of that machine? And that is laid out in the freight terms. So depending on which type of freight terms are chosen, we can either be held responsible or have ownership of that machine from the minute that it ships or when it's delivered to our store, okay? And whoever has ownership of the item while it's in transit is obviously responsible for that item. So they are the ones that pay the freight cost. All right, so there's two different methods that we determine freight by. They're called FOB shipping point or free on board shipping point and then FOB destination. And the title 
tells us when ownership transfers. So in FOB shipping point, ownership transfers from the seller to the buyer at the moment that it is shipped. Bless you. All right. So if ownership transfers at the moment that it is shipped, meaning that while it's in transit, the buyer has ownership, then the buyer has to bear the freight cost, or they pay for the shipping. All right, so the buyer bears the freight cost if the shipping terms are FOB shipping point. So in this case, whenever ownership transfers, as soon as it's shipped, uh, it's FOB shipping point. This means the buyer pays the freight cost from the shipping point to their final destination, which store, house, whatever it is. Okay, so if the buyer is assuming ownership while it's in transit and the buyer is paying for the freight cost, then the buyer can include the cost of freight in their overall cost of inventory. So that means if a buyer buys a machine for $1,000 and they use FOB shipping point as the freight terms, so they're going to assume ownership while it's being shipped, and they charge $100 to ship. That means that that buyer, whenever they record that item on their books, will record the total cost of merchandise inventory as $1,100. And this is something that we're really going to get into in Chapter 10 when we talk about equipment. But you are allowed to include shipping cost if you bought a machine that had to have a um, specialist, a technician to come and set it up. You can include all of those costs in your initial uh, journal entry for that item. Okay? So such costs are part of the buyer's total cost of purchasing inventory and are added to the cost of the inventory by debiting merchandise inventory. So in saying that, shipping charges are always going to be paid in cash. Okay? So if we were recording this item right here, then we would debit merchandise inventory for $1,000. We would credit accounts payable. Then when we wanted to record the freight, we would debit another, we'd have another journal entry where we would debit merchandise inventory for $100. And then we would credit cash for the shipping. So the total amount that we would add to merchandise inventory is the cost of the item and the cost of shipping. All right, now they give us an example right here, and let's look at it. So it says, to illustrate, assume that on June 10th, Net Solutions purchased merchandise as follows. So they purchased merchandise from Magna Data for $900. The terms are FOB shipping point. And then also they paid freight of $50. Okay, so whenever we look at the terms FOB shipping point, that means ownership transferred from the seller to the buyer at the shipping point. So the buyer was in charge of these goods. They had ownership of these goods while they were in transit. And if that's the case, then they would assume the cost for the freight. All right, so how would we journalize this transaction right here? So on June 10th, we purchased merchandise from Magnadata. So what did we receive? We received merchandise inventory. Well, what type, of, what type of item is merchandise inventory? Asset, liability, revenue, expense. Asset. Yeah, it's an asset. All right, so we increase an asset by making a debit entry. So we would debit merchandise inventory for 900 bucks. Now, you could do this as one one joint entry, but for simplicity purposes, they break it out so that we can see each piece. So we received merchandise inventory for 900 bucks. How did we pay for it? We paid for it on account, okay? So we are going to record a liability that says we owe Magna Data $900. We're going to pay them at some date in the future, okay? And the liability that we use to show that is account payable so we credit accounts payable for 900 bucks. This records the purchase of the merchandise. 
we purchased merged on account. Okay. The second sentence says, also on June 10th, we paid freight of $50 on June 10th purchase from this magnet data. Okay, so we're going to make a new entry. So on June 10th, we paid for freight of $50. Now to us, the buyer, that is a cost that we are assuming to receive that merchandise inventory. So because it's a cost that's associated with that inventory, we're also going to include it in our overall journal entry for merchandise inventory. So we'll debit merchandise inventory again for 50 bucks. And then cash is always, or freight is always paid in cash. Pay freight charges. Okay, does that make sense? So under FOB shipping point, the ownership transfers from the seller to the buyer at the time it's shipped. So that means that the buyer has ownership as it's in transit. And if you're in ownership of the goods as they're being shipped, then you're responsible for them. And if you're responsible for them, you have to pay for it. So we can include that in our total cost of merchandise inventory. Okay, what's the other side? So the other side is called FOB destination. And FOB destination means that ownership does not change hands until it reaches its end destination. So if the seller maintains ownership throughout the whole transit, throughout the whole shipping process, then the seller needs to bear the freight cost. Because if you're the buyer and the truck gets robbed halfway to your store, well, you're not responsible for that. So you shouldn't be responsible for the freight cost. So under FOB destination, the seller bears the freight cost, okay? So free on board destination or FOB destination, that's the easiest way to say it. So when you look at the shipping terms or the freight terms, the last word is gonna tell you when ownership changes hands. So an FOB destination, ownership changes hands at the buyer's final destination. So this term means that the seller pays the freight cost from the shipping point to the buyer's final destination. So when the seller pays delivery charges, they're gonna treat it differently than when the buyer uh, pays, the selling, pays the freight charges under FOB shipping point. So when the seller pays freight cost from the shipping point to the buyer's final destination, they're gonna treat it as a delivery expense. That makes sense, right? If you're the seller and you're shipping out something to a buyer and you're paying for shipping charges, that's an expense to you. So we're gonna treat it as delivery expense. Does anybody know what type of account that would be? I think you guess what type of account is delivery expense? expense? It's an expense, there we go. So yeah, it's an expense. So for us to record delivery expense, we would have to make a debit entry to record that expense. And then we would all also credit cash because freight's always paid in cash. So they've given us another example. Let's look at it. All right. So this is from the seller's point of view where the previous example was from the buyer's point of view. So one thing that you're going to have to make sure and look at when we're taking our test in two weeks you want to make sure that you understand which side of the transaction we're looking at. So if you're looking at the buyer, <clears throat> you're gonna treat things differently as if you're looking at the seller. All right, so in this case, we are looking at the seller's point of view. So it says on June 15th, we sold merchandise to this company on account for $700, terms FOB destination. Cost of the merchandise sold is 480. Then also on the 15, Net Solutions, which is us, the seller, pays freight of $40 on the sale for that for that sale. Okay. What's the first thing that we would do? 
want to show you guys an answer, even though you got your book. Um, so we sell merchandise to this company on account for 700 bucks. So the first thing that we need to do is record the sale, okay? How, how did we make the sale? Was it a cash sale? Was it a credit sale? Yeah, it's on account. So we did not receive cash. We're receiving a promise to pay from this other company. So we're gonna debit accounts receivable for 900 bucks. Nope, 700 bucks. Okay, so if we debit accounts receivable, what would our credit entry be? So what happened in this transaction? We made a sale, so we need to credit sales. So we have credit sales for 700. We're reporting a credit sale to Crans. Okay, are we finished recording everything associated with the sale of an item? So what about that second sentence? The cost of the merchandise sold is 480 bucks. Should we be worried about that? Yes. All right, so the cost of merchandise sold means that this sale that we made of 700 bucks, we didn't earn $700 worth of profit. Okay, we had some costs that were associated with that sale and we need to record those as well. So also on the 15th, we would record a debit to cost of merchandise sold, which is an expense. So we record this expense, the cost of merchandise sold for $480. And the credit entry to that, the credit side to that entry is we need to get this merchandise inventory off of our books. So if we sold those goods, we no longer have them. Okay, so we need to get rid of that merchandise inventory. So we would credit merchandise inventory for 480 bucks. And now we are finished with the actual sale. So anytime we make a sale, we always have to have two journal entries. One to record the sale, the second to record the cost of the merchandise that we sold. All right, now the second or third sentence says Net Solutions pays freight of $40 on the sale on June 15th. So is Net Solutions the seller or the buyer? The buyer. All right, so Net Solutions, we sold the merchandise. So we're the seller. And if we're the seller, then we need to say, what are the shipping terms? And it's FOV destination. All right, so we're the seller and ownership doesn't change hands until it gets delivered. So we, the seller, are responsible the entire way from our warehouse to the buyer's place of business. So we have to pay the freight charges. So the way that we would describe that is with an expense, which is delivery expense, okay? And it was $40. And then how do we pay freight? We always pay freight in cash. So you guys see that right there? So for like FOB shipping point and FOB destination, mm -hmm. the delivery expense journal entry always be the same or put in the same way? If you're the seller, yeah. But so cash will always be your, your credit. Well it'll always be paid in cash, but depending on if you're the buyer or the seller, and then depending on if you're if it's FOB shipping point or destination, that entry could change. So the, the buyer does he just flip flop? So we're we're about to look at that. But if you're the seller and it's FOB destination, it'll always look like that. Now, well, I'll, we'll get into that here in a second. All right, so right here. So this says the seller could prepay the freight even though the terms are FOB shipping point. So, like say with Amazon, you know, if you're an Amazon Prime member, um, you get free shipping. But a lot of times that shipping is baked into the price. So, you know, you may get free shipping, but it's a little more expensive than if you were to get it at 
Walmart or something like that. Okay. So the seller might prepay the freight, even though the terms are FOB shipping point. The seller would then add the freight to the invoice. So, you know, we looked at an invoice. Let's see here. But you know, when you get an invoice, if you're a business, and we talk about this a lot in, in cost accounting, it's called a three-way match. You would match your invoice to your purchase order to your actual receipt that you get whenever they deliver the goods. But an invoice is gonna show your company name, what you purchased, the terms of what you purchased, the cost, all those things. Okay, so what that's saying, what our book is saying, is if the seller prepaid freight, it would be listed on your invoice as an additional cost. Okay? So let me go back to, to where we were. So the seller could, pe could prepay the freight even though the terms are FOB shipping point. So under FOB shipping point, remember the buyer assumes ownership as it's in transit. Once it leaves the shipping point, the buyer is then responsible. All right, so if that happens, if the seller prepays it, the seller would then add the freight to the invoice. So just like before, the buyer would debit merchandise inventory for the total amount of the invoice, including the freight. And the reason they would do that is if the buyer is assuming ownership, then they are allowed to add freight costs to the total cost of their inventory. Any discount terms would not apply to the freight. So that makes sense. If you're paying a thousand bucks for items and fifty dollars for shipping, and they give you a two percent discount on your items, you shouldn't expect to get a two percent discount on shipping as well. The discount would only apply to the actual inventory. All right, so let's look at an example that discusses that. All right, so it says on June twentieth. All right, so we're the seller. Net solution sells merchandise as follows. So we're looking at it from the standpoint of the seller. Sold merchandise to Planner Company on account for $800, terms FOB shipping point. Net solutions paid freight of 45 bucks, which was added to the invoice. The cost of the merchandise sold is $360. Okay? So. How do we record that as the seller? So the first sentence, you just take it one sentence at a time. On June 20th, we made a sale. All right, we always treat sales the same way. We always credit sales, and then depending on if it's a cash sale or a credit sale, we would either debit cash or debit accounts receivable. So we would debit accounts receivable because it says we made a sale on account. So debit uh, accounts receivable for 800 bucks, credit sales for 800 bucks. Next, we have to take into account what was the cost associated with that sale. And they tell us that in the last sentence. So the cost of merchandise sold was 360 bucks. So we debit cost of merchandise sold, which is an expense. And we credit merchandise inventory because we no longer own those pieces of inventory. We sold them to this buyer, okay? So now the question becomes, what do we do with the freight? So we paid for the freight. So Net Solutions paid for the freight and it was added to the invoice. All right, so the total amount of money that planner company is going to pay us is $845. It pays for the total of the merchandise plus the $45 in freight. All right, so the easiest way for us to record that is to make another debit to accounts receivable. 
for the $45 that the freight cost. Okay? Now we know that this is for freight, and we're going to write that in our description underneath the journal entry. But as far as journal entry purposes, the customer is still going to pay us just like when we record it for the merchandise inventory. So we're going to debit accounts receivable because it's going to be paid by the customer. But because it's for freight, freight always gets paid in cash. Okay? So we credit cash. Does that make sense? So this is from the, this is the seller. Let's do the same transaction from the buyer. Okay? Now if the buyer is recording this transaction right here, then the buyer would see that I owe Net Solutions how much money? I owe them $800 for the cost of the inventory. The terms are FOB shipping points, so I'm going to be responsible while it's in transit. So I get to add freight costs to the total that I record for merchandise inventory. So the buyer would debit merchandise inventory for $845. Well, we'll break it up. For $800 for the, for the merchandise. And we bought it on account, so we would credit or yeah credit accounts payable so that's for the merchandise but then we also are getting charged for the freight and we get to include that as well so we paid for the merchandise we paid for the freight so that's what we would do on June 20th and then whenever it's due say in, in July we would come back and write off this account payable and then pay them cash for 845. All right, so we're, we're building up to you guys being able to record the buyer side and the seller side in one transaction. And that's something that you'll have to do on the test as well. But do you guys understand this transaction here? So we've looked at the buyer paying for the shipping charges. We've looked at the seller paying for the shipping charges with FOB destination. And now we've looked at the seller prepaying freight charges, even though the buyer was responsible. You guys with me? Luke, are you with me? All right. Cool. Okay. So the main thing to look at in the freight terms is to determine who who has ownership while it's being shipped? So under FOB shipping point, the minute that it ships from the seller's warehouse, ownership passes to the buyer. And if the buyer is responsible for it while it's being shipped, then the buyer pays for the freight. And if the buyer pays for the freight and the buyer is responsible while it's in transit, they get to include that cost in their total cost of merchandise inventory. Now compare that to FOB destination. And in FOB destination, ownership does not change hands until it is delivered to the buyer. So if the seller maintains ownership throughout transit, then the seller pays the freight. And if the seller is paying the freight, then that's considered an expense to them. And if it's considered an expense, then they have to charge it or journalize it as such. So they would journalize it as delivery expense. All right, so let's look at this problem right here. I want you guys to help me work it out. And this is like our homework from another day. I think Tanner had a question about it. Um, so let's look at this. All right. So determine the amount to be paid in full settlement of each of the two invoices. A and B, assuming that the credit for refunds and allowances was received prior to payment and that all invoices were paid within the discount period. All right, so let's look at these. Let's look at A first. 
All right, so in A, we bought merchandise of 4,500 bucks. So we have merchandise, freight paid by the seller, freight terms, and then credit for refunds and allowances. So if we bought 4,500, but we sent 800 back. All right, now we have to look, were we given any kind of discount? And the answer is yes, 1% discount. So we actually paid for 99% of our goods. All right, so that means that we actually bought 4,495. No, that's not right. It's 44.55. And then we sit back 720, or no, 792. All right, so the total amount of um, inventory that we actually purchased was $3,663. All right, what were the shipping terms? It was FOB shipping point. So that means that the buyer assumed ownership throughout transit. And if that's the case, then we get to add those shipping charges to our overall amount that we charge to merchandise inventory. So the total amount for part A that we would journalize to merchandise inventory is $3,863. Does that make sense? And the reason is, this is the buyer side that we're journalizing. Because it was FOB shipping point and we were under ownership while it was being shipped, we can include that freight in our total cost to merchandise inventory. All right, let's look at B. So in B, we bought $5,000 worth of goods, but we sent back 2,500. In this case, we were given a 2% discount. So, multiply each by 98%, and you get 4,900 and 2,475. Nope, 2,450. All right. So, 2,450 is the amount that we paid for actual merchandise. And what were the shipping terms? So there was $60 in freight that was paid by the seller, but the freight terms were FOB destination. So we as the buyer, we, didn't, we weren't worried about these items while they were in transit. We didn't assume ownership until they were delivered. So in this case, we cannot include freight in our overall cost of merchandise inventory. So it'd be 2,450. Does that make sense? And we had a homework problem like this that we'll go back and look at in just a second. Okay. All right, any questions about freight before we move on? All right, so let's look at 6.2e. So recording merchandise inventory transactions. All right, now remember last week we said there's two different inventory systems that companies can have. Perpetual inventory system or periodic. The perpetual system records every purchase and every sale, so at any point during the month, you can know exactly how much inventory you got on hand. The periodic inventory system is only updated periodically. So all purchases are recorded because we have to journalize purchases, but Sales of inventory are not, or reductions in inventory are not known until the end of the month when we do an inventory count, okay? Now for our purposes, we said all of these companies will use a perpetual inventory system, which is probably true of America today because um, it's a lot easier to keep up with that stuff on computer than to have employees doing it. All right, so this 6.2e, is going to take recording a merchandise inventory transaction and look at it from the buyer side and the seller side. Okay, 
So when we look at, so this is from the seller side. When we look at merchandise inventory, and this is a T account right here. So merchandise inventory, and we already said this is an asset. All right, so if it's an asset, all debit entries will increase the amount of merchandise inventory and all credit entries will decrease. Okay, so when we think about what types of transactions will increase merchandise inventory, purchases obviously increase merchandise inventory. <coughs> if you're a buyer and something shipped FOB shipping point, then the freight costs would also increase merchandise inventory. Okay, if we think about what decreases merchandise inventory. If we're a seller and we sell goods, we make a sale, then obviously the sale would decrease um, merchandise inventory. So sales purchases by customers, or wait, that's not what they're saying. They're talking about returns. Um, that. So what would decrease inventory? Purchases, returns. So if somebody returns, that's going to decrease it. And then also cost of merchandise sold. So anytime we make a sale, we have to account for the merchandise inventory that we sold. And then cost of merchandise sold as a T account. Cost of merchandise sold is an expense. So the only thing that we're going to do to cost of merchandise sold is increase it. And it would increase every time we make a sale. Okay. This is what I was looking at. All right, so 6-2-F. When you look at a merchandise transaction, so all the transactions that we've looked at in Chapter 6, we can journalize them for either the buyer or the seller just with the information that's given to us, okay? So, and those transactions are going to obviously impact the buyer and the seller differently. So each transaction affects the buyer and the seller. So whenever we're looking at a journal entry or whenever we're looking at a problem on a test, we have to make sure are we looking at this through the eyes of the buyer or through the eyes of the seller? Because depending on that, we're gonna work it differently. So this exhibit 10, I would highly uh, encourage you guys to go back and look at it outside of class. So it goes through and it gives you different transactions and it gives you that transaction from the buyer's side and from the seller's side. And it tells you how would you journalize that if you're looking at it from the buyer, how would you journalize it if you're looking at it from the seller? All right, so let's work a problem that does that exact thing. All right, so I want you guys to help me out on this problem right here. So it says Sievert Company sold Merchandise to Bray Company on account for 11.5, terms 215 and 30. Cost of the merchandise sold is 6900. Journalize the entries for both Sievert Company and Bray Company for the sale, purchase, and payment of amount due. Assume that all discounts are taken. All right. So if you were working this problem on the test, and I realize that working it on the iPad is not ideal I apologize for that. Um, I wish there was something else that we could do. So if this were on your test and you're given your text box in your iPad, my advice to you is to pick one. Start with either the buyer or the seller. Okay, in this instance, we'll start with the buyer. So did you say you can't, Tanner, did you say you can't tab down? Yeah. You can't? Well, that stinks. All right, well, make do the best you can. Um, so we'll start with the buyer. So if you were doing this on your test, you would write buyer at the top, and then, or, so which company is the buyer and which company is the seller? Can you guys look and figure that out? Server is the sell seller and buyer yeah. company is the buyer. So we're going to do Bray Company first. All right, so they're the buyer. Okay. Okay. 
So they purchased merchandise on account for 11500 bucks. That was the pre-discount price. Okay? After they take the discount, which we know they do because it says assume that all discounts are taken. So if we multiply 11.5 by 98%, that gives us what? Eleven two seventy. Okay. So the actual amount that they purchased was eleven thousand two hundred and seventy dollars. Okay. So then the buyer, what are they receiving in this transaction? They are actually receiving merchandise inventory. So we would debit merchandise inventory, and then how did they pay for it? Charge. Charge. Account. So yeah, we'll set up an account payable, a liability for eleven two seventy. Okay. If you are the buyer, are you interested or worried about the cost of merchandise sold? No. No. We're just worried about the price that we have to pay to purchase those goods. Okay. So for the sale, the buyer obviously doesn't worry about that. For the purchase. We just journalized the purchase. Now we have to journalize the payment that we owe. Okay, so that would be the first journal entry. The second journal entry would be us paying this amount off. Okay, and to do that, we would debit accounts payable for the amount that we owe. So we're writing off or we're paying off this liability. And then how would we pay that liability off? With cash. So if you're the buyer in this circumstance, you would make these two journal entries to record your um, transactions. Okay, now if we're doing it from the seller's point of view, it's a little more involved. Okay, now Sievert Company, so they sold these goods to Bray. So on the date of sale, how would we record that sale? Well, we'll make that eventually, but all right, so for the, for the initial sale, we know that they bought it on account. So we would debit accounts receivable for 11,270, which we know is 11,5 with a 2% discount. Yep, because we made a sale, we're gonna credit sales. Now, if you're the seller, you are worried about how much your merchandise costs. So the cost of merchandise sold of 6,900, that plays into exactly what we need to know as the seller. So we have to record that cost of merchandise sold. So our next journal entry would be to debit the cost of the merchandise sold, and then also to credit merchandise inventory, because that inventory is no longer on our books. It's no longer in our store, so we don't want it showing up on our balance sheet. Do you still have to add the 2% in there? So the 2% is, it doesn't apply to the cost of merchandise sold. Okay. So, um, so think about it like this. If you go in and you buy a shirt, let's say you go and you buy a $100 shirt from a store, okay? And they give you a 2% discount. Does that discount change what they actually paid for the shirt? No. no. So their costs are set. So whatever Seaver paid for that merchandise, 6,900, they pay for that whether they give you a 2% discount or a 20% discount. So the discount only applies to the sale. That's a good question. Okay, so we've recorded the cost of merchandise sold. We recorded merchandise inventory being taken out of our warehouse. So we recorded the sale, recorded the purchase for the buyer, so now we need to record the payment of the amount due. All right? So this payment from the seller, if the buyer was recording it, sorry, this payment from the buyer, if the seller was recording it, they're going to receive cash of 11270 
And then what's the seller going to credit? Well, this account receivable is no longer valid because the customer came in and paid it all. So they would credit accounts receivable. Does that make sense? So same transaction from the buyer side to the seller side. Any questions? All right, that's all we're gonna do. That's all the material we're gonna cover. So now I wanna, I wanna go and look at our homework. And I'll answer Tanner's question a week later. So on our, on our test, um, I would say you can definitely expect, I would be prepared to record journal entries from each side for the buyer and the seller. Uh, I would be prepared to be able to record freight charges and how freight charges impact the buyer side, how they impact the seller side, um, all of those things that we've just gone over. We go on. This is a problem you had, right, Tanner? Uh, yeah, the second one is the one that I'm having a problem with. Okay, cool. All right, so on this problem, this is just like what we just worked in class, um, except these are a lot larger dollar values. All right, so on A, they bought $58,600 worth of goods, but they returned 6500 Okay? Now, the next question is, were any discounts given? And the answer is yes. They took a 1% discount. So then we have to apply that 1% discount to both the merchandise they originally bought and the amount that they sent back. Okay? So that would be 64.35 and So 51,579 is the amount that they actually paid. All right, now what are the freight terms? Freight is FOB destination. So under FOB destination, who is maintain who, who maintains ownership while the goods are being shipped? Seller or the buyer? The seller. the seller. Ownership does not transfer until it reaches the destination. So in that case, if the buyer does not have ownership while it's being shipped, they can't charge freight. They can't count freight as additional merchandise inventory. And the question is, determine the amount to be paid in full settlement of each of the two invoices. So for part A, that's all they would have to do. 51,579. I think that's right. Check my work. Yeah. Okay. So that was part A. So the, the buyer does not include freight because they didn't maintain ownership while it was being shipped. All right. So now let's look at B. B says that they bought $73,100 worth of merchandise, but they sent back 3,900. Okay, were they given a discount? The answer is yes, it's a 2% discount. So that means they paid for So when you take that 2% discount, that means they actually receive $67,816. Okay? What were the shipping terms in part B? Shipping terms. 
It was FOB's shipping point. So that means that ownership transferred to the buyer from the minute those goods left the seller's warehouse. So from the minute they reached the shipping point to be sent to them, they were in charge. They had ownership. So if the buyer had ownership the entire time it was being shipped, then they're allowed to include freight costs in the overall cost of merchandise inventory. So they would add that $600 to their amount for the total they're gonna to charge to merchandise inventory. So it should be 68,416. Does that make sense? including shipping yeah so yeah I figured that was where your mistake was yeah so any any time it's FOB shipping point even if it's paid by the seller so that that doesn't make sense I mean that doesn't matter sorry even if the freight is paid by the seller because it's FOB shipping point and the buyer maintains ownership while it's being shipped you're allowed to add those shipping charges to your overall cost of merchandise inventory yeah, because you're not, you don't have ownership of it until it reaches your warehouse. Okay. So you're not worried with the shipping term or the shipping charges or anything like that because if something happened, it's not your responsibility. Okay, that's a good question. All right, let's see here. Did anyone have, I want to look at, let's look at this one right here. Okay. So this is a problem where we journalized both the buyer and the seller. Okay. So in this, <clears throat> so it says Statham Company sold merchandise to Bloomingdale Company. So we already know that Statham is the seller and Bloomingdale is the buyer. You guys like that? They made it easy. The S for the seller, B for the buyer. Um, so they sold it on account for 147600 bucks. Terms FOB shipping point with discount terms of a 2% discount if it was paid within 10 days, no discount if they took the full 30 days. The cost of the merchandise sold is 88600 The state and company paid freight of 2400 Assume that all discounts are taken. Now, I could give you this exact question right here and just give you these couple of sentences. And from that, I could ask seven or eight different questions, okay? So hopefully, even if you guys understood it, this would be a great problem to go back and rework um, because it kind of encompasses everything that we talked about with chapter six. I could ask you, um, how much did Bloomingdale Company debit for merchandise inventory? Uh, I could ask you to journalize the, just the seller, the transactions with the sale, purchase, and payment due. I could ask you to just journalize the buyer. So this, this problem has everything. All right, so let's work it out and make sure that we all understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. All right, so part A for, the, for Statham Company, which we've already said is the seller, Journalize entries for the sale, purchase, and payment of amount due. If an amount does not require an entry, leave it blank. All right. So for the sale, what would we journalize for the sale? Let me go and do this. Let me pull this up. All right. This will save us some time because we're, we're running out. All right, so for the sale, for Statham, because they're the seller, they're going to debit accounts receivable and credit sales. Now, why didn't they debit $147,600? Because you still have the 2% to have them. 
Yeah, because it says assume that all discounts are taken. So we have to take the discount from the, the sales price of 147.6, and that's what we record for the actual sale. So we debit accounts receivable for the 144.648, which is the 2% discount taken off, and then we credit sales. Okay, now also it says the cost of merchandise sold is 88,600. All right, now we said earlier that the discount is not included on the cost of merchandise sold. Whatever the cost is, is the cost. It's not, it doesn't vary by the discount or not. So the cost is the cost. So we're gonna debit cost of merchandise sold, which is an expense for 88.6. And then we would credit merchandise inventory because we no longer have these goods in our warehouse. So we have to get them off of our books. Okay, so for the sale, we only make those two transactions. Now for B, for the purchase, what does this 2400 represent? It represents freight. All right, why are we including that on the seller's transactions? So it says Statham Company paid the freight of 2400. Now obviously, it says FOB shipping point, so it was the buyer's responsibility. They assumed ownership while it was being shipped to them. So the, the seller just prepaid freight. Okay, the buyer's gonna eventually pay for it. It was just prepaid in advance by the seller. All right, so we need to record that as well. So that's money that we're gonna be owed, or the state that is gonna be owed from the buyer. So you record it just like the sales transaction. We debit accounts receivable, and then freight is always paid in cash, so we would debit cash for that amount. All right, and then part C, the payment of the amount due. So the total amount that Bloomingdale is going to pay Statham is 147,048 bucks, and we know that because that's the two amounts that we have charged to accounts receivable. So there, whenever they settle up and they pay off their account receivable balance. Statham is going to receive that in cash, and then they're going to write off the account receivable balance because they no longer owe it. Any questions about the seller's journal entries? All right, let's look at the buyer side. So the buyer side is easy. So the buyer, they bought merchandise inventory, and we know it was for $147.6, but we took the 2% discount. <clears throat> which made it 144,648. But also in addition to that, they're able to include freight because it's FOB shipping point. And the buyer assumes ownership while it's traveling to them. So they would get to include the full amount, the 147,048 in merchandise inventory, and then they paid on account. So we would debit or we would credit a liability Accounts payable for the 147,048. And then they're not worried about the sale. They don't have to journalize cost of merchandise sold. So the only thing they have to do is turn around and pay that back, pay the liability off in a few weeks. So they would debit accounts payable and then credit cash. So obviously the buyer side's easier. What's up? Right here. Okay. The 147,048. 147,048. Yeah. The reason is, let me make it bigger. So the reason it's 147,048, we already said that the sales price was 147,6. When you take the 2% discount, that knocks it down to 144,648. So that's what they paid for the merchandise. But because it's FOB shipping point and they assume ownership while it's being shipped, they can add the freight cost 